Hey fellow Vault Warriors, it's Angry Turtle and today we have updated Lazy Heavy Gunner build and I'm really happy how this build turned out. I think it's even better than my previous one and of course updated for all the changes that happened since the last one was made and whatever I was able to figure out. I spent some time on this build then I'm sure you will enjoy it. But before we start, I just have a quick announcement because I hear you and you ask me so many times how you can figure out which of my guides are up to date and which of those guys are not up to date. And that's the reason I wasn't uploading for last several days because I was working to sort this out for you. Therefore, if you go watch any of my videos, then if you want to find any of my playlists, you just click on this Angry Tartar profile and from there you have playlist and you can see I wipe out all the old playlist. Uh, my like videos you will not be able to see, but uh, you will see my playlist, which means character builds, turtle slab, all the guides that are up to date, crafting, farming, game mechanics, all the guides, weapon guides. I left as well my level one forever challenge if someone is interested and unboxing with turtle. But the first four categories are especially important. You just choose whatever you are looking for. If it's there, it should be up to date info about the topic. And if you will find anything that's not up to date, let me know and I will fix that. And here how it will look like if you are on the mobile phone. It's a little bit different, but the same general idea. Now back to the video. And now let's jump straight into the details about the video. First, special distribution. Special distribution is as follows. And there is no special boosting legendary packs. Therefore, what you can see here, it's actual special distribution. Now, legendary and other perks. About the legendary packs, because it's lazy heavy gunner, then I put a lot of emphasis to actually make it super easy to play, as easy as possible. That's why we have electric absorption. We need just one fusion core that will be always basically recharged. We have ammo factory to craft only occasionally and a lot free ammo, basically. That's what it does. Then we have funky dots and what rats. And about those two, here it can be a scenario that you will swap, let's say, funky dads for sizzling style or, for example, use funky dads and sizzling style without what rats. It's all a depend what legendary effects you will be able to get while crafting your legendary power armor. But I will explain further. For now, funky dads and what rats, it's the best scenario if you get fire resistance on your power armor. After that master infiltrator, you don't want to spend time opening the locks, picking the locks and taking one for the team is extra damage is always welcome. And what else I want to say in here, most of those perks works great just at rank one with exception of ammo factory. I think it's the one that you should upgrade first and taking one for the team that you should upgrade second because master infiltrator, what rats, funky dots and electric absorption, even if you will have just rank one, it's already working quite nicely. Of course, it's better when you upgrade, but yeah, it requires like 500 levels to get it all upgraded. Now, perks. Of course, we have heavy gunner perks. As this is a full health build, then we have those perks maxed out. We have bandolier to craft ammo from time to time and just carry a lot of ammo. After that, blocker. This is like a must have if you want to tank damage, especially from melee enemies. I always have it. Glow sight. It's not very important but it helps a lot if you face those glowing bloated enemies, helps you kill them faster. Although if you need like these points from perception taken away and used somewhere else, feel free to do so. After endurance, we have key, the most important perks like give a fireproof that makes you a true tank in power armor, under charisma, strength in numbers and tenderizer. I don't think much explanation is required. If you have any mutations, you want strength in numbers and tenderizer, just free damage, a lot of free damage. If you will be playing solo, I will put into the description a build planner for solo play. Like if you never join any team, you are always solo, maybe on your private war by yourself, then I will do modification and show you what perks you will use in that scenario. 
After that, intelligence, stabilize, scrapper, and gunsmith. Like, that's all we need, and we will not be changing that. It's perfect. We'll be using ballistic weapons, by the way. After that, agility, action boy, full max out adrenaline, and dodgy. Dodgy is great with this build. And no, I, I was having this question. It doesn't drain your fusion core. No worry about that. It doesn't drain your fusion core. After that, under luck, we have bloody mess for more damage, ricochet for super tankiness, and star genes to keep our mutations unchanged. Although, if you are a pro, you can play this build without star genes. You just need to avoid any rat showers on your way. And those are the perks. Now about the gear. First, let's take a look on the weapons. What I recommend is either 50 car or Gatling gun, but you can use other weapons if you prefer to. Whatever you feel is perfect. 50 cal is obviously my favorite gun. That's why there is like three 50 cals. You don't need as many weapons. I just have them to demonstrate with this build what works the best. For example, aristocrats with damage while aiming. That's what I recommend because it saves you ammo. And Aristocrats is like one of the best for ballistic ammo weapons at full health. Then, yeah, that's that's like preferred choice. That's a perfect roll on this 50 can faster reload, damage while aiming, and Aristocrats. Then yeah, that's a perfect if you can get. After that, you will need at least one weapon with vampire. It doesn't really matter what are other effects, as it will be rarely used. It will be only used when enemies will be really dangerous and able to do damage to you and you want to heal. For example, daily of decryption, you will use vampire weapon. Another great option to help you save even more ammo is Aristocrat's Gatling gun. I have faster fire rate version, although damage while aiming version will be great as well. Either of those options, you are looking for damage while aiming or faster fire rate, whatever your preference is, and Aristocrat's if possible, and Lazy option, if you don't have any good weapon, is final word, because you just do back at questline and you got this one for free. That's anti-armor with faster fire rate. It's slightly weaker than aristocrats, but difference is not huge. And last on our list, any type of minigun with a shredder that will be used without ammo in case there will be a daily op with enemies that can be killed only with melee attack. Then you just use the shredder for more information. Check my video explaining how to max out damage from shredder. Like, that's a no ammo melee gun. After that, about armor, we only have power armor. I will show you in the moment. Under apparel, I just have any kind of outfit. I'm not holding anything in here. Food and drink, we don't need any. It's empty. As you can see, bars can be exhausted. It's no problem. The penalty was removed. Under eight, we have nothing because we don't need anything. And of course, we'll be holding some ammo, but first the power armor. That's why this build is lazy. You don't need any eight. You don't need any food and drink. About the power armor now. About the power armor, all that is important and you are looking for is the second star. You want a mix of increased action point refresh speed, at least one. I mean, if you roll one piece with AP refresh speed, you are already good. And you need two pieces with fire resistance. Whatever will be the first star, whatever will be the third star, absolutely doesn't matter. Whatever happened there, you're good. You are looking for fire resistance and AP refresh speed. If for whatever reason, RNG will give you poison resistance. As I said, you just replace a legendary perks from poison resistance to fire resistance and run with that instead. If it will happen that on the third star, you will get slowly remove radiation when not in combat. And if you will get three or four pieces like that, you can consider skipping what rats from legendary perks. And of course, as you can see, it's a Hellcat power armor, recommended modification, nothing for arms, for Torzo, it's a jetpack, as for lazy build, you don't want to look for the way how to climb, you just want to jump and fly there. That's the easy solution. And about the legs, we are not using calibrated shocks here, we are using kinetic servo that basically increase AP regeneration while moving, what's really good with dodgy. I personally, I don't even need it on this build, as I was lucky to roll like three AP refresh pieces, but... If you'll have just one, then it will be important. Of course, we have this same mode on both legs. 
And about the helmet, I recommend Recon Sensors. I will show you this power armor, of course, in action after I finish showcasing everything about this build. I cannot wait. But Recon Sensors, that's my recommendation. Of course, you can use other stuff if you prefer, but I will show you why I made those choices. Of course, when you will go to craft ammo, don't forget to equip ammo smith on top of the legendary perks because those perks stack up multiplicatively. Then you always want ammo smith. You can equip super duper, but I will tell you it's not super necessary in this case because super duper only multiply the base amount and that's like almost nothing. Then I don't even know if it's worth to swap this perk in before crafting ammo. Now, because we are using only 50 cal and Gatling gun, look at our ammo gain. Just a little bit of gunpowder, lead and steel, we are getting almost half thousand of rounds for 50 cal. Then look at that, it's so easy to just choose some quantity and do good for a longer time if you craft more at once. You don't even need to actually farm for any of those ingredients, you just pick up random cans when you are on your adventures and you will have materials to craft. And the same situation with 5 mil ammo, that's even cheaper, that's even slightly cheaper and you're getting the same gain and that will be super easy to fit your Gatling gun. As you can see, carry weight shouldn't be an issue for you. I'm 94 out of 240 in my power armor with all those guns when in practice you should have two or three guns on you, you don't really need more. And about ammo, you only need 50 cal at 5 mil. You don't even need fusion core here. The only fusion core that you need will be inside your power armor. You don't even need a spare. Maybe keep one spare in your stash box, but that's it in case you somehow deplete your fusion core by jetpacking too much without taking energy damage. But super light build, super easy. Time to go, time for some action. Just don't forget after crafting ammo to swap back ammo smith for dodgy. Let me demonstrate first the tanking ability on those super mutant. As you can see, you are perfectly tanky. You don't even need to use a vampire weapon. Like at this moment, I have equipped my aristocrats weapon, Gatling gun, but because some of those super mutants are using energy guns, they heal me. Uh, that's all the damage I'm taking. There is really not much damage I'm taking. Oh, and I forgot to show you the mutations. Okay, let me do that now. Mutations. And those are totally different than I normally run on my main character, then that's totally different build. We have Burn Bones for extra agility. We have Empath to help our teammates. And I need to explain quickly. If you are the only person on a team with Empath and you are on the team with at least one other teammate, it will be like you have no mutation at all, but it will help your teammates. Therefore, no downside no benefit. But if there is at least one other person with empath, you will have benefit. And that's because I'm not using class freak. And I don't think class freak is important on this build. If you want to be even more tanky, you can consider adding more points to luck. I will quickly show you. You can take away point, two points from perception, one point from intelligence and add class freak. If you want to be even more tanky, I don't feel like it's necessary. That's why I didn't go for that. Then that's explanation for empath. After that, I have healing factor because I'm not using any camps here. Then downside is not important for me. I have this free health regeneration after every combat in case I still have some damage taken. I have herd mentality, extra special while in the group. It's always great. And marsupial, of course, jump higher and speed demon, reload faster, move faster. Then those are the mutations. Nothing else. I'm not using Scully skin because I don't need more resistance. I would rather have my AP and because I don't have class freak, I want to minimize amount of mutations I have in here. And now the combat. We are starting with Aristocrats, faster fire rate, Gatling gun. And let me demonstrate on those guys. And you can see my helmet is working when I aim down the side. They're getting those handy markers. And Gatling Gun is doing perfectly fine on those guys. As you can notice, it's like several shots and super mutants are down and you save a lot of ammo. And why I said it's good to have this helmet? As you can see, you have this marker and difference between this marker 
and just a dot on the compass, if he's behind the obstacle, you can still see the marker and some enemies like to run away, therefore you will always find them after you tag them at least once by aiming down the side. And now let's swap the weapon. We have as well Aristocrat 50 cal with damage while aiming. 50 cal, again, my favorite weapon. And you can see it's doing really nice. It's amazing sound, amazing performance. It's a little bit more expensive to fire than Gatling gun, but with this build, ammo is so cheap anyway that I don't think that will be a problem at all. And you can see this helmet is tagging enemies really fast after you aim at them. Then if they, if they run away after you tag them, you will still see them. This, this is really useful. The only downside I need to tell you, it doesn't work in daily ops. For whatever reason, you cannot tag enemies in daily op with Recon Helmet. Recon doesn't tag enemies in daily op. I don't know why. Next, we have Final World, which means easy, cheap option. If you don't have anything else, you can see it's working great. And it's free. That's why it's important. You don't need any effort. I mean, you still need to do back at questline, but no effort with rolling random legendary stuff. Then this gun is a perfect starter if you don't have anything else yet. Then that's a perfect starter. If you need aristocrat, you'll probably need to have crazy luck or trade. And here we have vampire. Actually, the second and third star useless, but the vampire is what you need in case there actually will be enemies that can do a lot of damage. And you can see it's doing slightly less damage. It's not bad damage-wise, but main purpose, main purpose for this gun is like a daily of decryption when enemies can penetrate a lot of your armor. And that's the situation when you will actually need a vampire. As here, in normal enemy situation, you don't need any healing, then you rather prefer to have more damage. But here's the healing option. And lastly, that's the Shredder. Unfortunately, this one is without bash damage. You really want a vampire bash damage. This one is without, therefore it's not doing the best damage. And I don't have basher equipped. You really want a basher pack to use it effectively, but because only reason for this gun to be in here is daily op with resilient enemies that cannot be killed otherwise, then I don't bother. I just have this gun if necessary. You can see the damage is not great, but you will still kill. Like, it's not like you will not kill. You will still kill. It's just not as impressive as it can be otherwise. But it's good. Then it's definitely good enough for daily op, even if you don't have any bashing, boosting stuff. If you have, that's of course better. If you don't, you're still good. You can see in here, and it doesn't use any ammo, that's of course the biggest benefit. And if you have any ammo, it will not work like that. Then you need to make sure you don't have any ammo for Shredder minigun. That's why I have it modified for Prime. I'm not carrying any Prime 5mm ammo, any Ultra Sight 5mm ammo, and I don't plan to carry any. That's, that's why this Prime receiver. As apart from that, the receiver is actually not affecting the damage of the shredder. It's totally different. You need to check the video if you want to know more, but yeah, it's not affecting it. And that's basically everything you need to know about this build. Let me know, of course, if you have any questions. Apart from everything that I show in here, all those weapons that I choose break really slowly, what means you don't need to repair them too often. And of course, running light, no aid required at all. No food and drink required at all. Just the ammo in your inventory and couple guns that you'll be using. And I choose a Hellcat power armor because it's the easiest one to get. You basically get it for free after completing full boss quest line. Then you just do full boss quest line and you have this armor for free. And then you just buy mods with gold after you save it. It's good already before you buy mods. And I'm being attacked by some floaters. It's not perfect now, let me kill them. Luckily they did zero damage to me, then there is no problem. This build is super tanky, good DPS, of course not the best to solo bosses, it's not the build to solo bosses and do the speed runs on them, but it's the build that will handle everything in the game with minimum effort from your side. That's, that's what's the goal with all those lazy builds that I'm uploading and 
I'm really proud of this one. I don't know, I, but I really enjoy it more than the previous one. I'm really proud of it. Therefore, I hope you will enjoy it too. And now as always, thank you a lot for watching and see you guys in the next one.